Hey everyone, my name is Kajal. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you're live, uh, send me a message or something so I know that people can see me. All right, I hope people can send in chat messages. If not, just hit the like message so I know that something's going on. Okay, I see people texting. Okay, hi everyone. Hi, Brushup. Hi, Janini Kiraman. Hi, Gentrix. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that name wrong. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we'll wait a few minutes for others to join as well. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Tell me who you are. Uh, are you a student, a working professional? Is this your first time attending? What are you expecting? What are your goals? Are you looking for an internship or a full-time position? Or are you just looking to network or learn from other amazing women who are always there at GHC? Hey, Preeti. Hey, Charul. Hey, Sabrina. Hey, Tanvi. Uh, thank you again for joining. Like I said, please feel free to introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about what you're expecting to achieve from GHC. Uh, I get my first message from Janvi. Hey, Kajal. I'm a student looking for a full-time job. Uh, thank you for joining, Janvi. Yes, GHC is a great place to get full-time positions. I got my full-time position my very first full-time position from GHC at Qualcomm. So yes, way to go. Hey, Sumedha, nice to meet you. Also, I did get a few pre-submitted questions. So as I go through my presentation, I will talk about that. Uh, but meanwhile, if you feel like, feel free to put a question in the chat, just use hashtag question. So it's easier for me to scan and check out for a question because there will be so many messages, it can get a little difficult sometimes. Uh, hi, Kajal, this is Eshwarya doing MS in Business Analytics. I hope to try and get a full-time job, lots of networking and get to know others in my field. Those are some great goals to have. Like I said, you can get internship and full-time positions at GHC. And the other thing is you can actually also network. So some of my good leads on doing these interviews came from networking. So yes, look at GHC, not only just a place to get job, use it throughout your professional life. Okay, so now that we have a good number of people on, uh, let's get started. A YouTuber, I talk about career development and career growth. Now in terms of GHC, I have attended GHC three times in 2017, 2018 and 2019. In 2017, I went as a student and got my first full-time position through GHC. Second year, I went as a speaker. And in the last year, I went as a recruiter. And someone who's gone to GHC three times, I am telling you, it is absolutely awesome that GHC this year is virtual. I know a lot of you are nervous that being virtual, how is it all going to work out? But look at this side. So it, at GHC, it's like a huge conference hall. Going from one place to another was at least a 10 to 15 minute walk. So sometimes if there were two sessions you were interested in and they were one after the other, you couldn't make it to both of them. But now being virtual, it's very easy for you to switch between sessions. At the same time, let's say you went into a session hoping it would be something, but if you didn't like it, it's easy for you to drop out and go for another one. And the same thing goes for the career fair. The career fair hall was humongous. When I went, there were at least 300 companies there and they had their booths spread across this huge career fair floor. So it's kind of difficult to, you know, find where your company is located, the company you're interested in. Plus you have to walk and then you have to stand in line. So being virtual is going to really help you. All right, now that we've got that, uh, I want to tell you what I will be covering today. So I'm going to be talking about a little bit of what is GHC and what are the different aspects. I'm going to be talking about the fact what you should be focusing on right now. That is six to seven weeks before GHC. Then I'm going to be talking about the whole career database, how it works. Because I've been a recruiter, I know what kind of access you get. Then I'm also going to be talking about how to talk to recruiters, how to network. And I'm going to talk about two things in networking. One, how to network on LinkedIn. And second, how to network at GHC. And in the end, I will leave some time for question and answers. So feel free to ask me questions whenever you want. All right, let's get started. So with GHC, what do you expect? It's not just the career fair. There are a whole bunch of events going on. And it all happens in parallel. So sometimes it's better to plan what you're going to do instead of just going there. I know they haven't released the agenda yet, but they will soon. 
So go look through the agenda and see what you want to attend and have a plan beforehand. Because if you try to decide what to do then, then you're wasting time and you're also getting a lot uh, and you're also getting overwhelmed because you have to now try and think, okay, which is the best way to go? Another example is tracks, right? So you have sessions, workshops, and at each particular time slot, usually they are half an hour time slots, you will have like 10 sessions going on and you have to decide which one to attend. Now the same goes for career fair. So the thing is, uh, they not don't necessarily release the list of uh, attendees. But they do it at GHC. Now the trick that we found was you can go into exhibitors list and you can look at the map. Now this was when it was physical, so it was very easy for us to find that map as to where which company was located and then get a list of companies that were attending. I don't know how exactly they're going to do it this time, but the trick is you can actually go to LinkedIn and find out which companies are attending. A lot of companies that are going to GHC will post on LinkedIn that, hey, we're going to be there, either this is our booth number or this is our virtual booth number, and you know these are the positions we're going to be hiring for. The key is to look for the keyword hashtag GHC, hashtag GHC2020, or hashtag GHC20. All of these hashtags help you find out companies that are going. So for example, when my company went last year, we did a series of posts to let people know that we're going to be at Grace Hopper. Um, so yeah, that's how you find out what kind of companies are going to be there. Another thing that happens at Grace Hopper is an open source day. If you don't know what open source day is, it's basically there are a bunch of companies that are coming together and putting out their projects. And it's a one whole day session. And you, also, you get to work on those projects with those people. Now, the thing about this is you can use this in your resume in the future that, hey, you know, you worked on this. It is great experience and it's a great way to get started with open source. So I have spoken to the person who actually organizes this and she said that this year they're going to have things like a um, workshop on how to get started with using open source workshop on GitHub, all of those things. So you can get started with using open source. Now, the reason I say this is important is let's say you didn't get that internship that you wanted that summer you can spend working on open source. I know of people who have worked on open source and they contributed so much that the company reached out to them and said that, hey, we want to hire you. So look at it in terms of potential future hiring plus experience. You can put that in your resume. And trust me, having seen so many resumes, if I see a resume where someone's participated in a competition or done open source work, they stand out more than someone who's done an internship. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind and check that out as well. All right, so now let's uh, talk about what to, uh, about this database. I know I got a lot of questions on, okay, I'm getting a question right now, so first let me answer that. There are, there are a lot of questions about, uh, from people from MSN Business Analytics, MIS, Neuroscience, UX Designer, primarily looking for a full-time role and how they should approach that. Okay, so this is a great question. Now, when I went, I went looking for robotics roles. Now, they are not the most popular roles being hired at Grace Hopper. It is more for computer science, so front end, back end, they were more popular roles. So now if you're going for a role that is not popular, you have to use a different strategy. First, go for smaller companies. A lot of smaller companies have these roles that they that might not have heard of. So for example, my company, BrainCorp, I hadn't heard of them beforehand. It, I actually, I didn't get that job at Grace Hopper, but we went last year and a lot of people did not know about our company because we were a small company. So go for small companies because they might have positions that are not just computer science. A second strategy is when you go to big companies, don't just go to the recruiter and expect to talk about your work. Ask that recruiter, hey, do you have a team for this particular position? So for example, robotics. When I got my job at Qualcomm, I did not know Qualcomm had a robotics center. So now when you think of Qualcomm, you think of 5G, you think of chips, but you don't think robotics. But they did have a robotics team where I eventually got hired. So when you go to big companies, keep that open mind. And when you go to a recruiter, ask them that, hey, do you have a team that does this work? Hey, can I speak to that engineer? Now that will help you because recruiters, they are more prone to hiring for general roles because that is something they hire in bulk. But roles like UX, UI, they are like two or three roles in big companies. Not like That is not the biggest role that they are hiring for. So try and use that strategy. 
Uh, okay. So now let me talk about the resume database. I know I got a lot of questions about these. So for one thing to remember is not everyone gets access to the resume database at the same point. So based on what kind of sponsorship they have, different companies get access to the database at different point of time. So like some companies might get it a month or five weeks before. So if you haven't heard back from companies asking for resumes, don't freak out, it's okay. Maybe the company just doesn't have access to the database yet. Second thing to note is a lot of these companies, they may not have decided what positions they're gonna hire for. So not because these positions that get hired for at least internship is for upcoming summer, even full time, because a lot of you will be graduating now in either in December or in May, you're gonna be taking those full time positions in June or July. So companies, not every company can think that future that much in the future, especially when there is a pandemic going on. So companies might still not know where their budget stands. And since because of that, they might not yet know what positions they're gonna be hiring for or how many positions they have as open. Also, a lot of companies have hiring freeze right now. So that is why you may not have heard back and that is okay. You still should try and get into that recruiter's radar. So that is why now, if you're not hearing back from resume database, you should focus on how to make a good impression to the recruiter when you attend the virtual career fair. Even if they're not hiring right now, if you make a good impression, the moment they open up, they're gonna reach out to you. I know a lot of times we think that, okay, you know, these recruiters have so much going on, how will they help us? But recruiters are vested in you. It is literally their job to fill that position. So they are counting on you. So anytime they meet a good person, a good candidate, even if they don't have a position right now, they keep you in mind. I know recruiters who've had like, stashes of candidates that they're just waiting to get hired. So like they'll keep that stash and the moment there's an opening, they reach out. So focus on making a good impression, even if you're not hearing back right now. There's one interesting question that uh, can a candidate upload multiple resumes catering to different types of jobs onto the database? A good question. To the best of my knowledge, no, you cannot because it only allows you to upload one resume. If they've changed it this year, then I don't know. Now with the resume, you should be focused on keeping, um, using keywords. So for example, if you're in the field of robotics, the words you should be using is perception, navigation, path planning, uh, odometry, localization. And then for skills, you should be using C++, Python, ROS. So a lot of times when people filter, so, okay, now another thing with this database, there are a lot of resumes. So no one is gonna go through them one by one. They are gonna use filters. So with this filters, you want to try and use keywords so you show up on the top. And that way your resume gets way more attention. You don't necessarily have to have multiple resumes for different positions. You can still have all of that in your resume. Okay, so giving an example. Uh, for me, I was interested in the field of robotics. Now, within robotics, there are a lot of subfields. Perception, computer vision, localization, mapping, path planning. And I did not yet know because I was still a fresher that, okay, I am only interested in perception. I had multiple interests. So what I did was for each of those interests, I put a project. And that way I was able to get the keywords in. And so if someone's looking for perception, my resume hits. If someone's looking for localization, my resume still hits. So the trick is try and put a set of projects from your different interest areas so you can use those keywords and get the attention. Another question which uh, a lot of people have is they are from different experience levels. Uh, how should they approach, each approach the career fair as? Okay, great question. All right, so now for this, I am gonna wait till I get to my next topic where I'm gonna be talking about how to talk to recruiters. So let's just put a pin on that question for now. Okay, so Another thing I want to tell you guys is tips. Okay, let's just get into tips on talking to uh, recruiters. As the, so the question that came to me is how do you approach if you have different experience? Now, when you first talk to a recruiter, a lot of people are so nervous. So one thing I want to say is practice, practice, practice. Practice how to talk to a recruiter. The things you should be focusing on. Number one, the moment you say hi, say your name. Now, uh, please don't get offended. If anyone gets offended, I'm really sorry. That is not what I mean. What I'm trying to say is say your name slowly. 
Now, the person you're talking to may not be from the same cultural background as you. So it might be difficult for them to pronounce your name. So when you introduce yourself, I know you're nervous, but slow it down a little bit and tell your name very clearly. Now, the thing is when you can tell someone what their name is and you can say, so for example, hey, my name is Kajal. Hey, my name is Kajal. And I'm so, like, you can't hear, you can't understand. So try and slow it down a little bit so the other person can know who you are. And name is one of those things that instantly hits social connection. So try and say your name very slowly. Second, you should be talking about your title. So for example, let's say you're someone who's already been in the industry. Your title should be, I'm a professional. Let's say you're someone who is studying right now, then your title should be, I'm a student. If you're on a career break, I would say skip it, it's fine. So name and then say your title. The reason you should say your title first is so the person who's listening to you. So when I went as a recruiter, if you start telling me about your project, I don't know how to judge you. If you tell me you're a professional, my bar is a little higher. If you tell me you're a student, my bar is a little lower. So this makes it easy for me to judge that, okay, when you're telling me about your project, what should I be looking for? Next, state what you are looking for. So let's say you're looking for an internship. Say I am looking for an internship in the summer of 2021, or I'm looking for a winter internship in December, 2020. Second, full-time positions. Now, full-time positions, the question that was asked is how do you approach for different uh, experience levels? Here's the keywords that you should definitely use. Entry level, mid-career, executive level, or you know, a senior level. Now, the reason you say these keywords is they know where to put you. If you say that I'm looking for full-time positions, again, I don't know if you've had experience before or not. I know you're going to tell me about your experience, but I want to calibrate. I want to calibrate how should I judge you? How should everything that you follow, where do I put you? Do I put you as someone who's going to start out? So the bar is going to be a little lower or a mid-level or a high level. So always tell what kind of level of positions are you looking for? Another thing to include with that is when you're looking. So let's say there's someone who's going to graduate soon and looking for full-time positions. Say, I am looking for entry-level full-time positions and I will be graduating in May 2021. Or, you know, if you're graduating in December, I will be graduating in December 2020. Make those things clearly known right off the bat. Because here's what I did when, or, you know, even what we were taught when we went to recruit and we were standing to talk to different candidates is write those things down first. So that way, even your resume gets taught, sorted. Because the thing is, once we collect all these resumes, they get distributed again to different teams based on what they're looking for. So if someone's looking, so let's say there's a department who's looking for two full-time positions at entry level and one senior level, they're going to ask the recruiter, okay, give me resumes for entry level. Now, because you've made it very clear what you're looking for, you're in that stack and that stack can easily be given to the department head that, hey, here are all the resumes for people in entry level positions. Next, you should talk about your domain. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm a recruiter, then I may not know about every department. Let's say I am an engineer, but I'm an engineer for my own department. I don't know about other departments. So I'm a robotics engineer. So if a resume comes to me, if a candidate comes to me and says, hey, I am in the field of robotics, then it's easy for me to judge this person. Now, next person comes in and says, I am in the domain of UX UI. Now, I don't have a background in that. So it is not easy for me to judge you. Now, what happens is most companies go with a team. So what I can do when you tell me that I'm a UI UX person, I can be like, hey, wait a second. Let me grab this other person who's also from my company, who's recruiting and knows about UI and UX. And then you can talk to this person and then this person can calibrate your skills and put your resume accordingly. If, I, if you tell me everything and then I figure out, oh, okay, you're a UI UX person, you've wasted both of our times and then... I might be like, okay, I don't find this person interesting because I can't judge you. I don't know anything about you in UX. And so you might not get that good rating. So another thing that a lot of recruiters or engineers do is they list down or rank candidates in uh, their resumes based on this interaction at the career fair. So try to make sure that you tell it right off the bat that, hey, this is my domain. 
Now, another thing that, as I mentioned before, is let's say you're going for big companies for an abnormal role, right? For example, I was in the field of robotics. So if I'm approaching a company like Microsoft, I make it known off the bat that, hey, I am in the domain of robotics. Do you have a team? And then they were like, yeah, we have a team here. Let me grab this person whom you can talk to who is in this domain. So, so try that. So, so now a lot of people, are, they do not have the defined role or job description which they are looking for. They are more in a broader field like neuroscience and psychology or more broader field of stuff which they can expect from GHC. How should they approach the recruitment team? Okay, very good question. So let's say if you don't know your domain, that's fine. Say that you're open to these positions. Again, I'm not saying that be drilled down on your domain, but still give them some examples. So for example, let's say you may be interested in UI, UX and front end and um, uh, I don't know, and uh, let's say machine learning, right? So let all of these three domains known to the recruiter. The reason it is important is so they know which bucket to put you in or, you know, and it's not necessary that they will only put you in one bucket. If you mention these three roles, they will literally write all of these three domains for you and make sure that you get access to this. Like I said, again, recruiters want to help you. So help them help you. Even if you have multiple interests, try and tell them that, okay, these are the three I'm interested in. Or let's say you're still not sure, then mention the two that you're more likely for and then say, I'm actually also open because I don't know a lot. So that's okay. So you can say that, hey, I'm you know looking for different positions. I'm not sure, tell me, what do you guys have? But if you can at least say one or two domains, it makes it easier. So there's one more interesting question from Alark is, uh, should we do small talk when we are talking with recruiters or we talk more about skills? Aren't the recruiters bored hearing the same and same thing over and over again? Okay, great question. Uh, no, you shouldn't do small talk. I mean, it depends. So if the recruiter looks really tired, then yeah, maybe. But otherwise, they're in the zone. They know that this is what they have to do and there's a long line going. So don't worry about it. it it's, it's their job. They know what to do. The small talk should be reserved for when you're trying to network. When you're in the virtual career fair, you it's it's this, okay? You've given your resume and now you have like a window of two to three minutes to sell yourself. So this person will be interested. Now, here's the thing with GHC. I don't know if a lot of people know this or not. So some companies can hold interviews at GHC. So what they do is you uh, they talk to you and based on that, they determine if some you are someone they should interview and they book you an interview slot. So in this two, three minutes, your main job is to sell yourself. So continuing down, state your name clearly, give your title, state what you're looking for, internship, full-time positions, tell when you will be graduating, tell your domain, and then next is your pitch. Your pitch is where you're gonna be talking about your experience, your skills, your projects, Trust me, they're not bored of listening. They just want to understand who you are. Last question on that is, uh, is the job career fair more focused towards people who are already in the US or uh, they are open to Europe, India, all, all around the world? Okay, great question. In my experience, most companies are looking to hire in US only. So that is why the recruiters they have, the positions they have is US only. However, there were a few companies that were open to hiring in other places. Also, another thing that you can do is when you go to multinational companies like Qualcomm, Microsoft, Uber, they are more willing to hire you in different countries. But the thing is, the recruitment team that has come to the career fair is from the U.S. So it's like they are looking for people in the U.S. However, if you know you're an exceptional candidate or if they know other teams and they have the company policy, then they will refer you to the recruiter from another country. And then there were very few companies that very openly had it that, hey, you know, we have positions in US, we have positions in UK or India and so on and so forth. But I would say like 5% were maybe international hiring and then 95% was just US hiring. All right, so let's talk about the pitch. Now in the pitch, what you should be talking about is, okay, so firstly, pitch is essentially your professional story. Now, I am saying professional, not personal. Don't start talking about your family, how many, uh, like you have friends or family and like if you're married or not, no. In fact, do not talk about that. It is illegal in the US for a recruiter to ask these things. So if you tell them these things, they are uncomfortable. 
So don't talk about your personal life. However, you can talk about something that inspired you to get started. If you want to put that in your pitch, that is perfectly fine. So for example, my story is that I am a self-taught coder. So I do mention that and it tells them that where am I coming from? And it shows that, you know, I am willing to put in my own efforts to get things done. I'm not the person who everything needs to be told to. So if you have an inspirational story as to how you got started or what inspired you, definitely put it in. But it shouldn't be a big story. It should be like one or two lines. Because as I said, you only have two to three minutes to talk about yourself. Second, give them a snapshot of your professional story. So every experience you've had, talk about that. If you're a full-time position person, then talk about, hey, I have had three years of professional experience in the field so-and-so. So for example, here's what my pitch looks like. Hey, my name is Kajal. I am looking for full-time positions. I am a professional with over three years of experience. Uh, I am looking, I am open to going anywhere in the US. In my professional experience, I have worked at Qualcomm and BrainCorp. BrainCorp is a robotics startup. In this startup, I have done so, 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 so. So this is how your pitch goes. Now, when talking about your projects or your experience, a lot of people might be like, oh, I don't have prior experience. I don't have internship experience. Then what do I do? Then talk about your projects. This is what I did. When I went, I did not have a summer internship. So I had done my own projects. And it doesn't have necessarily have to be just your own projects. You can also talk about the projects you did in school. That is completely fine to do. But now the thing that you have to do is, you have to talk about the title of the project as to what was the goal of this project. Then you talk about what you did. Now focus on both the things. What was the team's contribution and what was your personal contribution? Number three, talk about the impact. This is super important. And this is the critical thing that will help you stand out as to what was the impact. As in terms of, okay, you created a path planner that is 25% faster than the other one. Another example, you created an algorithm that speeded up the entire uh, operations by 10 seconds. But now when you say 10 seconds, it's kind of difficult to gauge. So you can say that 10 seconds represent 5% uh, improvement. So mention those numbers, like these numbers help show that you understand what you're doing. I know it's super difficult because when I was a student, I was like, yeah, I just did the project. Like, you know, the goal was this assignment to localize a robot and I did that. But so this is another thing you should be doing in this time frame that you have right now. Go back to your projects and see if you can compute impact. One way to do that is, uh, let's say for the same example, right? Uh, localize a robot. So what you can do is uh, run, let's say 10 simulations. And in this 10 simulations, it can be, each simulation has a 10 by 10 box, a 20 by 20 box, a 30 by 30 box, representing a square space of 30 centimeter by 30 centimeter or 30 inches by 30 inches or uh, meters. So, and then you run through all these simulations and then your impact is in a space of a five inch by five inch, my algorithm was able to localize uh, the robot in five seconds. For much larger ones, it took 20 seconds. Or you can even talk about as the space increases, the time increases linearly or the time increases exponentially. So this is good for small spaces, but this algorithm is not good for bad spaces. Now this impact, this you saying that you understand what this particular tool's limitations are, where it is beneficial, that is what sets you apart. So like number one thing, when you talk about your projects, talk about impact, talk about numbers. I know it is difficult. So use this time to go back to your project and like, see how you can come up with those numbers. One of the popular questions is, should we mention relevant versus irrelevant experience type of the job which you are looking for right now? And uh, if you have multiple unrelated jobs, what should you do? Okay, great question. So the question is, how do you talk about relevant and irrelevant experience? Relevant experience, you talk about the skills that you will bring that are in alignment with this particular position. So let's say if it was a technical position, right? You have coded in C++ and that is directly impacted. If it's a UI UX role, then you have worked, um, I think the tool is called Torch. I am not 100% sure, something like that. So if that is there, it's very easy to talk that this is the thing. Now with irrelevant experience, people think that there is nothing you can pull over. Talk about transferable skills. Example, 
teamwork number one important thing that sets you apart when you talk that hey as a team we did so and so you are able to say that even though this was not the skills that you were looking for but it has all these other social skills like teamwork trust me most companies you know when we have these hr screening interviews the thing that hr is looking for is are you a team player or are you a leader if you are looking for leadership positions or senior roles are you a leader so when you have done something else where you can show these skills and talk about that so it doesn't matter if it's not the same technical things also talk about communication so uh, let's say for example me okay i used to work at a bookstore so i can talk about that i can talk about that in this bookstore i was able to coordinate with my manager such that we all were there at diff- at peak times uh, such that all of our time tables were in a way that whenever there's peak time a lot of us are there and we are able to manage the crowd as a bookstore employee i was there at the cashier many times and it helped me to talk to people answer their questions when they were looking for books all of those skills are important trust me um it's not just about your technical knowledge this is very popular quote and it's very true you can learn the technical skills but you cannot learn the soft skills so when companies are looking to hire you they're not just looking of if you know the skill it's your attitude it's your mindset it's your are you able to talk to other people do you know how to solve problems that is another great thing to bring as a transferable skill so let's say as a bookstore employee there was some problem let's say the cashier broke down i mean the cash register broke down and you were able to come up with an alternative method where you were taking down people's credit card numbers and putting it signed and you know giving it to your manager so we can charge them later or maybe you just took cash and you know you you came up with some way to solve this problem tell that story that is your transferable skill that you know how to solve problems and you're great under pressure these are the things that you can talk about when you feel you're not coming from a technical background so we have the short time for the pitch how do you prioritize okay um first thing like i said talk about your title talk about uh, your name your title what you're looking for your domain and then in this project you should only talk about that one best project of yours so remember i mentioned that in the start when you tell your domain you can kind of gauge what this recruiter is looking for so if you want you can make this a conversational dialogue after you tell your domain and you know you have these multiple um interests you don't you're not just focus on one domain you focus on multiple domains you can ask which positions are you hiring for you can ask which position uh is uh, available right now and which are not and then once they tell you that you can fit in the project that is in alignment with that so for example when i was talking for about expositions i would ask them what are the role that they are hiring for if they would say computer vision i would talk about my computer vision project if they would say path planning i would talk about my path planning project so usually one or two project that's the max you can get in that time frame and the idea is to talk about your best project doesn't matter if it was not the most recent one you did and it was something you did 5 months ago you may have a more recent project but if this project you think is the best fit for the company or it's the one in your domain that you're interested for talk about that uh, another thing is so what happens is after this 2 3 minutes of pitch where you've told them they now go through your resume and see if there is something they would like more questions on so it's important to put like your best foot forward talk about your best project so moving forward can we like get into networking yes let's start talk about networking so there are two things to focus on right now when you are still um like this is pre gcc period you're not at the conference right this is the time you should be focusing on networking at linkedin the today's world we live in people do google you up so have a strong linkedin game create an amazing profile on linkedin and add hashtag #gc2020 hashtag #gc use those things so when recruiters are looking on linkedin for people to hire you show up and trust me we have done this so i know recruiters do that secondly i just want to after you have a long a strong linkedin profile you can send requests to recruiters even if they are not necessarily hiring for gcc 
if their team is going to GHC and they see your hashtag GHC or you let them know that you're going to be at GHC, they will tell the person in their team who is going to GHC, be like, hey, look out for this person. Or they might just connect you. So firstly, make sure you have a good profile. Second, use the hashtags. Then third, start sending in your requests to connect with these recruiters. One very important thing, make sure to send a personalized note. Just by sending connect, connect, connect requests, you're not going to get anywhere. Make sure to add a personalized note. So what this personalized note should be, go through their profile, look at everything they've been doing, and then talk to them accordingly. So now if you see recruiters, a lot of recruiter positions, they will mention things as to that I hire for this position. This is my area of expertise. This is my area of domain. So for example, in the same company, you will see people who are recruiting for the PM positions, people who are recruiting for engineering position, people who are recruiting for manager position. So make sure you're connecting to the right recruiter by looking at their profile and then sending them that request that, hey, I see you recruit for this particular positions. I am interested in this domain. Can we connect? Also, another thing you can do is you can also con connect with engineers. Again, go through their profile, look at the projects they're working on, look at the skills that they have put in and send a message accordingly. Where do you use hashtags? Okay, so in your title, so after you put your name, you get to put your professional title or any title that you want. In there, you can put multiple things. So you can put um, incoming student, you can put a professional roboticist engineer, and then you can put hashtag GHC 2020. So for example, if you want, go check out my profile on a LinkedIn. It has roboticists, YouTuber, and it has, uh, I think uh, I spoke somewhere, so I put that. Back in 2018, when I went to GHC as a speaker, I actually put that as hashtag GHC 18 speaker. And I got a lot of messages from people being like, hey, what topic are you talking on? When's your schedule? And I was able to send those details to people. So use those hashtags that way. Another way to use hashtag is uh, on your LinkedIn, go to the search tab and then put in your keyword. Let's say, for example, GHC 2020. And then in the search, look for people and then look for content. If you look for content, you're able to see company posts that are like, hey, we're gonna be at GHC, hashtag 2020. And then another thing is, it's not just about reaching out, it's also about creating a personal brand on LinkedIn such that recruiters reach out to you. So for example, I post a lot of things on LinkedIn. And the result of this is I get messages from recruiters who are looking for positions being like, hey, we saw your profile and we found you very interesting. Um, I am hiring for so-and-so position, would you be interested? So posting on LinkedIn is creating this personal brand where you can attract recruiters to come to you. Uh, things you can post about is that, hey, I'm going to be at GHC. Uh, another thing you can post about is things you do. So for example, I'm a robotic software engineer and I worked on a personal project uh, of different path planning algorithms. So I compared RRT and RRT star and made a nice little video about that. And then I will go and post on LinkedIn being like, hey, I worked on this project. These are my key learnings. And then use the right hashtag in terms of roboticist, path planning, A star, and then post that content. So now people from your domain are going to go check it out. They're going to hit like, they're going to put comments. And this is a great way to network on LinkedIn. It's not necessarily about just recruiters. It's also about engineers and learning from them so that they can at some point help you. Is it okay to uh, ask a recruiter on LinkedIn whether they are attending GHC, they're not explicitly stated? Yeah, definitely ask. There's no harm in asking. Um, but be very aware of how you are asking. Like, don't be someone who's only interested in them if they are at GHC. Otherwise, Tara, why are not interested? Then you're building a negative relationship. No, you can definitely uh, message them, connect with them, and ask them, hey, I'm going to be at GHC. Are you going to be at GHC? Uh, let's say they say, no, I'm not going to be there. But you can go ahead and ask, do you know the recruiters? from your company who are going to be at GHC. Sometimes some people might re reply, sometimes they might not know. Again, it's a little bit of a hit and miss, but the one thing that's great about this pandemic is a lot of more, lot more people are, I would say, active on LinkedIn. So the chances of getting responses are much higher. Um, and the other thing you can do is 
So when you look at that person's profile, also go and look into activity. If it's a person who posts a lot, you know that the chances of them responding are much higher because they're more active on LinkedIn. Another great thing you can do, I've seen a lot of students do this and it brings a lot of attention, is to share value. Okay, so LinkedIn, when you post on LinkedIn, it's about not just what you can get, but also what you can give. So you can talk about the things that you have learned. One nice trick that I have learned from Madeleine Mann and uh, Pasant is that they ask their students or people whom they're helping to post about the things that they've learned in the webinar. So for example, you attended this session, you can go on LinkedIn and say, hey, I attended this session and these are the three key things that I learned. And then put those three key things. So now other students who see this, they gain value from your post. They're gonna hit like, they're gonna comment that, hey, great, content uh, it's super helpful to me and your profile just rises up and now it might just catch attention of some recruiter so the thing is on linkedin it's about giving value so it's not just about you know messaging and connecting with people but also about posting good content that will bring other people's attention because now you are giving value to them so a lot of time people think on linkedin it's about just what i can get but it's a network of give and take so if you can give something valuable to someone else, then they might be more than willing to give you things. So to give you another example, I post a lot of content on LinkedIn, helping students based on what I have learned. And the result is, so another friend of mine, um, whom I had really long time ago, she sent a referral to me. She's like, hey, I know this company is hiring and I've seen a lot of your content where you give examples of robotics. So I think that you might be in this field. Uh, I am referring you. And then she just sent my profile in. So even before me knowing, so it's creating that effect where someone else can help you because you have helped them, because you shared some insight that was useful for you. So another thing, it's not just about connecting with recruiters and all. Also connect with other fellow GHC people going. So for example, at GHC, even though all the events that you paid for are part of GHC, companies will have events outside of GHC at that same location. So for example, they will have a dinner, a networking session, or anything outside GHC. So I know it's virtual, so they, it, it's not the same, but they might still hold virtual events where you can come and hang out. The way I found out about those things is through my friends. I had not, the first time I went to GHC as a student, I had never gone before. I did not know what to expect, but I did connect with fellow people who were also going. And one of them said that, hey, by the way, uh, Qualcomm is having this event at outside of GHC in this ballroom, you should check it out. And then this way I was able to learn that there are these events. And to tell you my story, I went to that Qualcomm event and that is how I got a referral for uh, interview. And I landed up with Qualcomm through that. I had not gone to Qualcomm's um, booth in the career fair because I didn't even know that they had a robotics field. But my friend said that, hey, there's an event. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's check it out. I went and I networked. And through that network, I was able to get a referral. And they're like, hey, you know, by the way, I have this robotics team that I'm looking for. Would you interview with us? So build that network with your friends so you can find out about other things and one of the again things of doing this is post on linkedin your content so that others know and then they will connect with you and you can share information so moving on um how do you cater to this whole virtual world of virtual ghc how, how would you have insights in that so I don't know a lot about how GHC is going to be doing it. They haven't yet released that information. But if you look at uh, virtual career fairs, the system is more or less the same as to you have to be in queue to talk to a recruiter. So again, there are two things, right? One is what you see uh, do outside of GHC and one what you do inside of GHC. Outside of GHC, uh, LinkedIn is one of the great ways. Inside GHC is going to be the career fair. So in the career fair, you will probably be in line to talk to the recruiter. And then once you get your turn, you have the three minute window to pitch your pitch. And yeah, that is one other thing. You should practice your pitch. Now, here's a trick. Now, when you practice, you're practicing amongst yourself or your friends. So you don't necessarily know how it's going to go in person. So what you can do is make a list of companies you're interested in and then categorize your top companies and uh, second tier companies. Your second tier company is where you should go first. So in second tier company, go to two, three companies, talk to a recruiter, get that experience, and then go to your top company. The reason being 
this will help you get that nervousness out because it's one of those things where only once you've been exposed to it that you realize that okay i'm doing good or not so for example one of the top things i see students do is they're super nervous so because they've not talked to people so try this you know go and talk to two three people get that nervousness out of you and then talk to your top company so you're not as nervous as before uh another thing to network at ghc is ghc will have these rooms um virtual rooms where you can just come and talk to people so go to those places go to those break rooms and chat with people one way to chat is so for example right now we have this chat going on right just because uh, i am the speaker doesn't mean you're the or i'm the only one you're going to connect with go on through that chat and look at other people you find close resemblance to and connect with them or let's say someone asked a question that you know an answer to give that answer so now that way you are standing out even if i am a speaker and i get to see okay this person is helping me out and answering that i will see how i can return the favor and help this person out too there will be a lot of questions about we should apply before going to the chc or before talking to the recruiters or after talking to them both like why should you wait go ahead and apply so it's not like you can only apply once right if you apply now and they see you now you can get an interview before ghc so why not go for it uh, and then once you speak to them so here's the thing you should also do when you speak to them you should ask them two questions at the end of your whole pitch when they're like okay thank you for coming and so on and so forth one do you have a special link for ghc a lot of companies they will have open positions that you apply to and then they have special ghc links where you can upload your resume second how to connect with them so let's say they say that okay you know i am active on linkedin you can reach out to me on linkedin or they give you their email id so what you can do is in your conversation remember the things that you talked about and then after that send them a message saying hey i have applied this is the position i applied for this is the position number and like firstly thank them that hey thank you for talking to me second say what was the interaction you had third Uh, thank you for referring me to the website where i can apply i have applied this is the position i have applied for and in case you know you get like a number or something let them know that like make their job easy by giving them all the information so apply before and then if they tell you hey here's a special link go apply to that special link and then say that hey you know you're coming to this uh, position from ghc and then send them that message either on linkedin or email saying hey thank you for talking to me Uh, I did apply, and here's the link. Like, why wait? Go ahead and apply. Right? Like, there's nothing stopping you. One interesting question: Can a male attend a GHC? Okay, this is a very controversial topic. To the best of my knowledge, there is no restriction on who can attend GHC. I have seen males attend GHC, and I, I, when I was a recruiter and standing, I think I saw like two guys who approached a booth and gave me their resume. so to the best of my knowledge there isn't um, anything that says males cannot attend however from my perspective as a recruiter this is an event focused on women so seeing a male there it it seems odd i'm going to be honest about it uh, again i don't judge you i understand that you are coming from a position where you are also looking for jobs and it is a tough market out there so i totally understand why you're doing that but know this that it's okay to do it but you are going to get that little bit of uncomfortableness from the other person because they are because it's one of these gray area things where no one knows what the right thing to do is so you are going to face that be aware of that so you know you can navigate it more easily and even if you face it you don't uh become more uncomfortable because you're like okay i know this is going to happen so you push through it and you still talk to the person so just be aware that it might feel uncomfortable to someone else so should we another question is should we explicitly ask a recruiter or how to ask a recruiter for scheduling an interview even though you have not received a call go for it go for it i so it's one of those questions where if they have a policy they will let you know so sometimes some companies have policies where they can't uh, let recruiters give these answers but sometimes they don't so and it's also the thing right like they've been talking to people all day long for 3 days and they're probably tired and they didn't think of it so you're just reminding them so 
Yeah, go ahead and ask. Um, in terms of answers, if you're a good candidate and you struck out, they will surely give it to you. If not, then they might be like, hey, um, we, are, we are all booked or, you know, we're still figuring that out. Don't feel bad. Try to use it in a positive way. Be like, okay, I totally understand. Still, thank you again for your time. Uh, can you give me your message so I can connect? How do I connect with you? Either email or LinkedIn or some other thing tool that they use. So once you get that, after that, you actually go back to them and say that, hey, thank you for talking to me. It is possible that, you know, you still didn't get a call. You can ask them that, hey, I was looking for some feedback. Do you have any feedback for me on how I can improve? So maybe, you know, you didn't give a very solid pitch and that's why they didn't ask you for an interview. But you can still ask them that, hey, do you have any feedback for me? Don't ask then and there. You will put them in a tough spot. Message them later. And, you know, in case they don't remember you, you can be like, hey, that's okay. Uh, here's my resume if you want to take a look and give me some feedback. Just ask very openly. But the thing is, when someone gives you an answer you don't like, still thank them. Because sometimes it's an uncomfortable position. So let's say I get a resume and I didn't like this candidate. Um, but now they're asking me, hey, can I get an interview slot? I have to say something like, uh, I'm still deciding and we will let you know. Don't keep badgering them, right? Like, you can be like, no, okay, when can you let me know what, what to expect? Don't do that because this person's also human and they also see that, you know, you are really looking, but they also have a duty to find the best candidate. And it's not always about you're not a good candidate. It's, it's just not a good fit. For example, I have seen candidates who look great on paper, but then they are not what we are looking for. Like, it's a really great person, but let's say we are only looking for perception and someone's a path planning person like they are great it's not because they're not great i'm not hiring it's because it's not a fit it's not something that my company is recruiting for right now so don't take it personally and give them that segue to say that okay thank you are there any non-tech positions in gsc okay great question are there any non-tech positions yes uh however most of the non-tech positions i've seen has been in the role of pm so project manager program manager and product manager. All these three positions are something I have seen at GHC. But other than that, I haven't just seen a lot of non-technical positions because again, GHC is about computer science. Uh, on LinkedIn, can you post about your primary projects and your insights about how it connects to other fields which are not your primary uh, be your focus? Okay, so another great question. Uh, in case you guys didn't hear the question, the question is, can you talk about the insights of your project? Yes. So here's what I would do with projects where I want to share my insights. How it relates to other fields. And how it relates to other fields. So firstly, when you put your projects on LinkedIn, same thing as resumes, use bullet points. Don't write big paragraphs and sentences. No one's gonna read them, put bullet points. And how it relates to other fields is something I would put in the end. First, I would talk about the objective impact tools you used, all those numbers and stuff. And then in the next set of bullet points, I will talk about how it relates to other fields. And then what I would do is I would take that project and I would make it into a post and be like, hey, this is a project that I worked on and the way it relates to this other field is so and so. This way you are giving value to others as to what you did in this project and how it can relate to other fields and you're getting a conversation going and you brought attention and you put your message out there. So now someone else looks at it and they're like, oh, okay, wow, like this relates to this. I'm looking for this position. You're an interesting candidate for me to talk to. Another thing you can do is, you know, when people put comments on your post, reach out to them through direct message. Be like, hey, thank you for your comment. Would you like to continue this conversation? And so on and so forth. Uh, another question. Should you type your resume in or upload a PDF? And is a two-page resume allowed? Okay, great question. So the question is, should you type in your resume or should you upload it? And is two page allowed? Now this, both of them is, I'm assuming for the database as well as LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, do both. Put everything down. So on LinkedIn, you basically get to put things as slabs. So you put it like education, you can put a project, you can put experience, you can put all those things as slabs and also upload a PDF. So you can add these um, interactive media in there. You put in your PDF. Uh, on your database, I think on database, you can only upload PDF. As to the third question for two-page, 
absolutely not do not write a two page resume because when you show me a two page resume i instantly get the message that you don't know what is important you have not checked this position you have not researched this company and you have no idea what is relevant to this and you want me to do the work of going through two pages worth of your achievements to find if there is a link learn to comp uh, compress information and put it in one page two page i have seen uh, recruiters who will look at two page resume and instantly remove it like they won't even look at it don't do two page resumes uh is ux technical or non technical because us ux researcher and designer can be engineers and there could be pms in ux as well so how would you categorize all right great question so the question is is ux technical or not it is it is technical some people don't see it that way and that's okay you when you go to someone you don't have to try and define uh defend that it is technical or it's not technical you just have to talk about ux so a lot of tech companies have ux person they even have a whole dedicated team because companies know that user experience matters a lot so don't even like that's that's not a question that to me is important you just go talk about ux and if someone asks you to defend if whatever you feel if you think it is technical it is not technical have points ready for both in terms of project management yes I have seen PMs which are focused on UX. I've seen PMs technical and non-technical everywhere. Uh, so, what would you recommend the crowd? Uh, it's like a couple of minutes left of doing uh, beforehand this virtual GHC LinkedIn, YouTube, website. What would you recommend them? Okay, yeah. So now that we are uh, just shy of five minutes at this session, uh, the most important thing I wanted to tell you guys is what to focus on right now. Three things. first your resume even if you've uploaded your resume you can edit it and resubmit it make sure to use keywords second practice coding every day this is like the number one lesson i learned after first few of my interviews all position especially full time positions this is how the whole thing goes you put in your resume uh, either you get a call back or you talk to a recruiter on field then you get called in so first is going to be an hr screening then a coding challenge then in person interview and then you may get an offer sometimes there might be another set of interviews as well coding challenge is absolutely going to happen either they're going to give you a timed one or it's going to be in your interview practice every day the most important thing is when you get these online assessment you will be asked to solve two programming questions in 30 minutes so it's not about can you solve it it's about can you solve it in 30 minutes super important so make sure you practice enough so you know how to solve a problem in 30 minutes two problems in 30 minutes and then uh, the th next thing i would focus on is linkedin definitely everyone's on linkedin these days i get a lot of messages from recruiters who are looking to hire make a strong linkedin profile post content such that you can attract connect with people send a personalized note so that they will accept have those conversation and see if you can convert it into positions and then i would also focus on github and making your own website so i'm not asking you to do everything from scratch there are pre built templates just use it upload your projects now the reason websites github and um, linkedin works great for showing your project you can show photos and videos photos and videos about your project speaks volume way more than text so for example when i was working on um, image stitching i put out photos of image stitching next i was working on pet planning i made this little gif where a robot is finding paths through the maze using my algorithm and i put those things out so in one of my interviewers uh, interviews my interviewer told me they did check out my website and then they asked me questions based on stuff they saw on my website and that helped me put an edge after i was hired uh, i asked that person that hey you checked out my uh, website do you have any feedback he's like no uh, the only feedback i'm going to give you is this is absolutely amazing because he had seen the website before he even interviewed me he already had a lot of idea of what i was doing and he was already impressed so yeah create that github or website you don't have to put a lot of work just whatever existing you have put it out there so it helps you know make it easier for the other person to understand you uh, uh, so how do all these people be connected with you and what are your next uh, videos or 
sessions sessions which you are trying to organize um thank you for that question so yes uh, this is the first of the series i have been contacted by a lot of people so i am working on creating a series to help all of you out uh, right now we have two to three speakers in line i'll probably do it once every two weeks or every one week where we are going to be talking about how to build a better resume uh, how to create a great linkedin profile as well as other topics if there are some topics that you would be more interested in please tell me put it in the chat put a comment anything that works for you so i can bring that information to you you can also reach out to me on linkedin and send in your questions uh, because I, sometimes i get a lot of them i might not answer right away but uh, like be patient with me also you can like i said comment on this video because sometimes uh, this is like community space right so even if i have answered that question to someone else or they may know the answer they will tell you the same goes for the facebook group right post your questions ask for help there's nothing wrong in asking for help there are people out there ready to help you and i will be doing that through a set of speaker series um so if you are there's something you're really interested in let me know i can bring that to you and once again thank you so much for watching i hope you guys found this information useful and you can use this uh, to you know make the best out of chc the only thing i will say is you know like be calm keep doing it um i know sometimes it takes a while before you hear back or you know sometimes we get a lot of rejections don't take it personally take it in terms of a challenge take it in terms of lessons as to how you can learn better from it how can you improve your chances i got a lot of rejections i got rejections from uber microsoft before i finally landed a job at qualcomm and each of those lessons each of those rejections i learned something or the other like i had no idea you were required to solve two coding problems in 30 minutes i took that lesson i practiced 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 and when it came to my next interview i was able to do it like really fast cuz i knew what to expect uh same goes for this channel through this channel i post content on what you can expect when you go into the professional world all the lessons i have learned you shouldn't have to make your own mistakes uh you can learn from my mistakes so do check out my video and if you enjoyed this video give it a like don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you know when i post more content once again thank you for watching Have a great day and have a great time at GHC and don't forget to subscribe. Bye everyone.